All right, greetings everyone. Welcome to the third part of the video for section 4.5. Uh, just doing one more example of finding the equation of uh, given the graph of a logarithmic function. Okay, so let's work with this function here. And we're not told the name of it, so I'm just gonna call it g of x. And it appears that this function has a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative three. And notice that the graph shoots off to the right from that vertical asymptote. So because it goes to the right there, that clues us into onto which of our equations or formulas we need to use. And in this case, we're gonna use the g of x equals a times log of uh, x minus h plus k or x minus b, excuse me. Okay. And we actually know the value for b because we know where the vertical asymptote is. That's going to be the value related to the vertical asymptote, which will be negative three. So we can plug that in. So we have g of x equals a times log of x minus negative three plus k. And then we know that minus minus there will make a plus. So this is a times log of x plus three plus k. All right. So next thing we do then find two points on our graph that we can use to help us find the values for a and k. And I see this one here, negative two zero is one we might use. And then also this one here, which is one negative two. And so we'll plug those in and set up two equations. So for the first one, using our zero as our output, negative two as our input, we'll have a times negative two plus three plus k, uh, which that one could simplify a bit to zero equals a times log of one plus k. And then we will also set up using the other points. So negative two equals a times log of one plus three plus k, uh, which is to become negative two equals a times log of four plus k. And then at this point we see we have two equations that contain two unknowns. So just like we did on a previous one, we may solve for the value of the variable in one of these and plug it into the other one. So for example, we could solve for k here and plug it in for k in the other equation. But something nice happens in this case, and I will say this will not always happen, it just happens to work out on this equation. Because we have this log of one here. And let's think about what that means. Well, remember first of all, if there's no base written for the log, we assume it's a 10. This is really like log base 10 of one. But remember the way logs work is we're trying to ask ourselves to what power do we have to raise 10 to get one? And we know the answer there is zero because 10 to the zero equals one and really anything to the zeroth power equals one. <laughs> so what we know then is that this part right here is equal to zero this log of one. So we can rewrite our equation then as zero equals a times zero plus k. But a times zero is just going to give us zero. This is like zero plus k, uh, which just gives us k. So then we know that the value for k there is go just going to be zero. Okay, so we get k equals zero, which we can now plug that in to the other equation and solve for a. So that's what we'll do now. So we'll set up a second equation here, plug in the value for k. So what we get when we do that so that'll be negative two equals a times log 
of 4 plus, again, the value for k is 0. But then that just becomes negative 2 equals a times log of 4. We can solve for a there by dividing by log of 4 on both sides. Okay. When we do that, we get a equals negative 2 over log of 4. We plug that into our calculator. And that will give us negative 3.322. Two. And I apologize, kind of ran out of room there. But now that we have that, we have the value for A, we have the value for K, we also know the value for B. We can plug that information in and write our equation now. So the equation for this, related to this graph then, will be g of x equals negative 3.322 times log of x plus 3. And that would be it, since the value for k is 0. We don't need to add that there on the end. So that would be our equation. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.